there. How's that, Vanessa, John? Is it good? Okay, thank you, John. Anyway, um, as you know, I'm a recovering musician, and I always feel more comfortable with the music stand in front of me. Um, so, may our hearts be in tune with God's spirit, and may our minds think God's thoughts. Amen. I wanted to thank Bonnie for giving me this special privilege of speaking to you on one of the gifts of the Spirit, understanding. In Matthew's Gospel, the disciples ask Jesus why he speaks to the people in parables. And he answers, saying, Though seeing, the people do not see. Though hearing, they do not hear or understand. The passage goes on to quote the prophet Isaiah, saying, For this people's heart has become calloused. They hardly hear with their ears. They have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn, and I would heal them. Understand with their hearts, and turn, and I would heal them. Isaiah says, we understand with our hearts. A man's doctor suggested he be checked out for prostate cancer. The biopsy confirmed the presence of cancer, grade of two, Gleason score of seven. His urologist recommended surgery. After the surgery, his prognosis was good and no further treatment was necessary. To understand this man's disease, we must go beyond the medical information, diagnosis, Gleason score, PSA levels. We must understand with our hearts the anxiety of hearing the diagnosis, the wait for treatment, the emotional toll when telling his family, and the changes in his relationship with his partner. This is the understanding of his disease, understanding with our hearts. This morning I want to borrow an image from Archbishop Fred Hiltz. When he preached about the Primates World Relief and Development Fund at the cathedral, he illustrated his sermon with a pair of big yellow rubber boots. So today I want to use a similar image to illustrate the three possible ways to understanding with a pair of shoes. My first path is wearing and walking in another person's shoes. That is experiencing in some fashion his or her life. A very positive encounter with experiencing has been through participating in the Anglican Church's justice camps. Dioceses have organized week-long national justice camps across the country for several years. During the week, participants were exposed to experiential learning. For example, at the poverty justice camp held in our diocese in 2009, the group experiencing urban poverty walked everywhere around the city, as many who are poor do now, from the shelter or the mold-infested apartment or sleeping rough to bre breakfast at Brunswick Street Mission, to lunch at Margaret's house, and to dinner at Hope Cottage. The participants experienced the fatigue and sore feet that those who experienced walking everywhere, every day. At the justice camp in the Diocese of Niagara in 2010, some participants visited the Mohawk Institute Residential School that opened in 1828 and closed in 1970. Although not run by the Anglican Church, the agreement with the Government of Canada stipulated that the uh, principal must be an Anglican. The school still stands at Six Nations, First Nation near Brantford, Ontario, and is being actively preserved to provide physical evidence of the impact of residential schools on the Mohawk people. Justice camp participants experience a bit of the life of the Indigenous children suffered within its walls and met with survivors. John Stuart Mill, the English philosopher, said, there are many truths which the full meaning or understanding cannot be realized until personal experience has brought it home. So pathway number one to understanding 
is experience, and that is walking in another's shoes. Pathway number two, a shoe has a tongue. Like us, we have one tongue, but two ears. The second pathway to understanding is listening. I had the privilege of participating in a talking circle at the Millbrook First Nation outside of Truro. The elder who led the circle passed around a talking stick. If you held the stick, you could speak. Otherwise, you listen to what other members of the circle were saying. Talking circles are often a venue for storytelling that stimulates understanding, a model Jesus used with parables. I have also had the privilege of listening to many people from the developing world through my involvement in international development education and the Primates World Relief and Development Fund. I listened to a young Catholic sister from Nigeria share her dream with me that community workers in Canada would meet, uh, Canada and Nigeria would meet and learn from each other. I heard an Anglican priest from Africa who was studying at the Cody Institute telling us about African concepts of community and working together for community well-being. The Dalai Lama is quoted as saying, when you talk, you're only repeating what you already know. If you listen, you might learn something new. We can learn many new things from indigenous ways of learning and these missionaries from Africa and elsewhere, ideas worth listening to. So pathway number two to understanding is listening with both our ears. Pathway three. My third pathway to understanding is solidarity. That is walking in your own shoes alongside others, with others leading the way. It can be demonstrated physically like marching in the pride parade for LGBTQ plus equality, or through publicly taking policy stances for justice, or providing compassionate services for those who are homeless, hungry, addicted, incarcerated, all at times taking your lead from others' expressed needs. The Face of Poverty Consultation is a local faith-based organization, is a small illustration of solidarity. Its mission is the eradication of poverty in Nova Scotia. First Face works with the Nova Scotia Action Coalition for Community Wellbeing, the Affordable Action Coalition for um, and the federal government's Reaching Home program focused on reducing homelessness. FACE also monitors legislative, legislative committee meetings, writes letters to MPs, MLAs, and ministers. FACE writes op-ed pieces for the newspaper and holds educational events on issues such as the Lunch and Learn on the Living Wage which was held before the pandemic. To mark the International Day for the Eradication of Poverty this October, FACE will hold an educational event on two of the social determinants of health. The first determinant discussed will be income. People living on low incomes have shorter lifespans, visit emergency rooms more often, and suffer a higher incidence of chronic disease like diabetes. The second determinant will be food insecurity, that is the lack of access to sufficient and nutritious food a determinant especially important for children. Uh, we will advertise the webinar in a weekly e-news so you could join in. FACE strives to be in solidarity with people living in poverty. Pope John Paul II said, solidarity is a firm and persevering determination to commit oneself to the common good. So pathway number three to understanding solidarity, walking alongside in your own shoes. Before leaving solidarity, let me ask what it means to be in solidarity with creation. We're entering the season of creation in September. Uh, a topic for another sermon, perhaps. But Bonnie suggested I expand a bit on this topic. One tiny example. Last weekend, we noticed two monarch butterfly larvae on our milkweed flats. 
And Sheila, my wife, had planted the plants in our garden in Pictou County. Planting the milkweed was an act of solidarity with the monarch butterfly, surely one of God's most beautiful and marvelous creations. More broadly, indigenous peoples teach us to live for the seven generations into the future. That is living now, so our grandchildren's grandchildren will continue to enjoy and prosper in a healthy environment, living in solidarity with creation. A great place to discuss how to be in solidarity with creation is participating in our climate cafe, third Thursday each month. There are certainly other possible pathways to understanding. I have mentioned the three I know best, experiencing, listening, although maybe Sheila might disagree about the listening part, and being in solidarity. <laughs> Isaiah said we understand with our hearts. Understanding will inevitably Understanding will inevitably lead us to faithful actions, actions motivated by our new understanding we have achieved with God's help. As we say at the end of our worship with each Sunday, glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Let us pray. God of yesterday and of tomorrow, always you startle us into new understandings just when we think we have it all sorted out. Startle us again. Break open our perceptions and confound our pat answers that we might be gifted with a new vision. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>